Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. As many of you guys know, I don't usually do lives on Shabbat, but this is a very significant moment. As many of you all have already heard, I heard a little bit ago, but it took me a while <laughs> since it's Shabbat to get ready. Iran has launched direct attacks against Israel. This is a potentially historically significant moment. Iran has never directly confronted Israel with uh, military weapons launched directly from Iran against Israel. They usually use their proxies like Hezbollah in the north, which is in mostly Lebanon or in Syria, or the Iraqi Hezbollah Brigade, uh, but they don't, they have not until today ever directly claimed to attack Israel. So a little while ago, we know that Iran has launched uh, UAVs towards Israel. They've launched uh, suicide drones towards Israel. Uh, there are reports coming out of uh, the Shia media around the world saying that they're also going to be launched. There's also launches from neighboring countries like Iraq and Syria and potentially Lebanon of missiles and drones against Israel. And there's even reports that there are ballistic missiles potentially being launched from Iran towards Israel. And so this is clearly a very serious moment. This is a serious moment for Israel. This is a serious moment in world history. We're going to pray in a moment. I want to invite you to be praying. I want to invite you to be joining me in prayer uh, and, and together in a moment, but also throughout the day. Just want to give a few thoughts on the situation. There's two really ways, two primary ways that this could play out. One is that Iran is doing this to save face. They can't look weak. And so they, some sources say Iran actually leaked information to a number of outlets, uh, you know, including the U.S. government, other governments, that they were going to be doing this attack. And so this is not something that has caught Israel directly by surprise. I mean, obviously, there was a lot of things in the news about credible reports about an attack. And so it's possible that Iran had to do something they gave a heads up about this, and some are saying that the majority of what is being launched will not get through, that there will not be a significant toll on Israel. That is one option. I don't know if it's true. I have no way to judge that. Obviously, it's still very serious, no matter what. The second option is that and, and really the question is, how is Israel going to respond? So Israel, if there's no real serious uh, casualties or if, if the majority of everything is intercepted and there's no loss of life, you know, do they do a minimal response by attacking, you know, in like they're already doing in Lebanon and Syria or other places along those lines, but don't directly attack Iraq? Where the other option is, this becomes a pretext. Listen, one of not President, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's, I think, greatest regrets is that he never attacked Iran directly when he had an opportunity in order to attack their nuclear program. Israel has no issue with the Iranians. Israel does not want a conflict with the Iranians. And, and there's actually a great revival going on in Iran, people coming to faith. You know, there is a number of extremists in the government that hold many of the people captive. Okay, so the war is not with 
the Iranians, it's with this particular government and the religious fanatics in Israel. I mean, sorry, the religious fanatics in Iran who want to destroy Israel. So the question is, you know, does Netanyahu, does Prime Minister Netanyahu decide, listen, because of this, we now have an opportunity to launch a full-scale military attack against Iran directly, and in particular, targeting Iran's nuclear facilities and programs. Because here, here's a challenging situation. We know that Iran is the one who is creating the unrest throughout the Middle East. They're the, the largest funder of terrorism, and they're the ones that are creating, in large part, this, uh, you know, funding Hamas and Hezbollah, creating these uh, attacks against Israel and fomenting unrest around the world. And so the reason why, if they get nuclear weapons, they will feel they can do this forever. They will feel that nothing will be able to stop them, that they will be able to continue to, you know, attack Israel, threaten Israel, you know, attack and do, you know, with impunity. And so it's such a tough thing. Do you take this as an opportunity to directly attack the Iranians and teach them a lesson, okay, or... Do you not do that because potentially if you directly attack Iran, the cost to Israeli life could be huge. Uh, plus, could it lead into a regional war or a world war if Russia and China, America, you know, France, Britain get involved? I mean, who knows where this could go? I mean, I don't think we're, I don't think we should like panic and say this is going to be World War III. I, I don't think we're there yeah, I think it's probably less likely that it's going to escalate to that level, but it has the potential and could actually happen. And so what do we need to do? We need to be praying, but we need to pray with wisdom. So I want to encourage you some things to be thinking about to be praying for Israel. Number one, of course, we want to be praying for the protection of every innocent Israeli, whether they're Jewish, whether they are Palestinian, uh, whether they're, you know, so whether they're Arab, or whether they're Jewish, Christian, Muslim, it doesn't make a difference. Praying for protection over every citizen of Israel, number one, okay? Number two, we want to pray that God gives wisdom to the Israeli government to know exactly the best way to respond, the right way to respond. What is the smart thing to do? How far, how strong is the counterattack? What strategy does Israel pursue in their going against Iran? And we need especially for wisdom and courage for the Israeli leaders because there are going to be a, there's going to be a lot of external pressure from the United States, from the European nations, for Israel to not attack, to not do anything significant that's going to escalate it further. And so Israel needs wisdom to know should they heed that advice or not. Because there's also going to be a lot of pressure on the Israeli government and Prime Minister Netanyahu from those within his party and many Israelis that say enough is enough when it comes to the Iranians. We need to teach them a lesson once and for all. And Iran having nuclear weapons is an existential threat to the existence of Israel as a Jewish state because they are religious fundamentalist fanatics. They are crazy. These, re these religious leaders, the Ayatollahs, the Mullahs of Iran, they are crazy. They, are, they, they could care less 
about loss of life. And so we need to pray that they know what to do. We also need to pray that the leadership that our, that our president, President Joe Biden, that the Democratic and Rep Republican Party will not, will not force Israel to make any decisions that are not in the best interest of Israel's safety. And I got to tell you, we are in the most alarming and concerning moment in history that I have ever seen. And to me, it's not surprising that you see certain segments of the, um, of the left turning on Israel or have turned on Israel. That's, it's, not, it's not surprising. We've known that. We see it on the college campuses and on the universities. It's part of the greater woke ideology of being anti-Israel is part of that woke ideology and mentality. But what's shocking to me is how many Christians, how many believers that claim to be, tr not, I'm not talking about nominal believers. I'm not talking about nominal Christians. I'm talking about people who claim to be Bible believers who are standing against Israel. And I'm shocked by conservative commentators, some pretty well-known ones who are coming out against Israel and are putting out anti-Israel propaganda like Tucker Carlson. Shame on Tucker Carlson. Unbelievable. So we need to be praying because I am concerned that we are coming to an Exodus chapter one moment where it says there arose a Pharaoh who did not remember Joseph. Listen, God says, I will bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse Israel. One of the reasons why America has been blessed is because we have blessed Israel and has stood with Israel. But I am concerned there is rising a generation, there is rising a leadership on both the right and on the left that are anti-Israel or at the least not supportive of Israel. And friends, it's like that Exodus chapter one moment. We're coming up on Passover. It, you know, Christians have celebrated Easter, but Passover is just around the corner. Okay. It is a week from Monday night this Monday night. And I am concerned that believers and leaders in, our, in the nation of the United States and around the world have forgotten what a blessing Israel has been, how Israel has been on the front line It's absolutely incredible. It is such a significant, serious note. We need to pray that there would be a great awakening among believers, among our political leaders, among our business leaders, among leaders in media that would say, listen, there is a clear good and there is a clear evil. Hamas is evil. Fundamentalist terrorists are evil. There's no, they're not freedom fighters. They are evil. And this attack of Iran on Israel, America, world, wake up. It's not just an attack on Israel. It is an attack on the United States. It is an attack on the West. It is an attack on the biblical worldview of Judeo-Christian values upon the church, upon the synagogue, because what they're saying is we don't fear America. We're, we, we're, we, don't, we, we don't respect America anymore. Israel is America's allies. Even though Joe Biden said, President Joe Biden says don't, they do it anyway. What they're doing is they're going, they're, go, they're doing this intentionally because they're saying, listen, America is not the world power anymore like it used to be. 
A weak America puts the world in a very dangerous position. America was one of was the key nation holding back the forces of extremism in many places around the world from spilling out into the West. And friends, that is not the way it is today. And this is a clear message. America is weak. The West is weak. We don't have the will to stand up against evil and against extremism. Okay, this is not against Muslims, right? We got to love all people, but it is a, but it is against those that have an ideology, whether they be on the left, whether they be on the right, whether they be Christian, whether they be Muslim, even whether they be Jewish, who wants to harm other people in the name of their God. This is unacceptable, evil, evil. We need a great awakening. And if something doesn't change in the next couple of years, we are going to quickly slide. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a doom and gloom type of guy, but we are going to quickly slide into what the Bible talks about is going to happen in the end of days. So hopefully that can be restrained by the right people being risen up. But we need to pray. So let's just take a minute and let's take a moment and pray. You know, on Shabbat morning, we recite certain psalms as part of the morning prayer service. And I want to recite a little bit in Hebrew and a little bit in English from Tehillim Psalm 91. Yoshev Beseter Elyon. Betzel Shaddai Yitlonan. Whoever sits in the refuge of the Most High, he shall dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. Omer Ladonai Machzi Umitsudati Elohai Eftach Bo. I will say of Adonai, the Lord, He is my refuge. And my fortress, my God, I will trust in him. For he will deliver you from the ensnaring trap and the devastating pestilence. With pinion, he will cover you. And beneath his wings, you will be protected. Shield and armor is his truth. You shall not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow of that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in gloom, nor the destroyer who lays waste at noon. Let a thousand encamp at my right side, and let a myriad at your right hand. But you say they shall not approach. We say, those drones will not approach. We say those arrows will not approach. We say ballistic missiles will not approach from the north, the south, or anywhere. You will merely peer with your eyes and you will see the retribution of the wicked. We ask God that you would pour out judgment upon the evildoers. We pray, God, for a spirit of teshuva, a spirit of repentance to come upon the Iranian leaderships, upon the ayatollahs, upon the mullahs, upon those individuals, Abba. We ask for a spirit of teshuva, but if they do not repent, we pray for a spirit of retribution that your judgment would be swift, Lord, and retribution would be meted out against those who would seek to harm the apple of your eye. We pray the full armor of God over the nation of Israel. We say you are their rock. You are their redeemer. You are their fortress. Because you said Adonai is my refuge. You have made the most higher dwelling place. 
No evil will befall, befall you. No plague will come into your dwelling place. He will give his angels charge over you to protect you in all of your ways. God, give your angels charge over Israel. You are Adonai Tzivaot. You are the Lord of the armies of heaven. And I pray that you would dispatch the heavenly hosts, that the angels would get ready to war, that the angels would war, that the angels in your divine breath would re re redirect those missiles in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. That their missiles would come to nothing, that they would see the power of the God of Abraham, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the, the power of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the power of the God of Israel, the power of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah that all their plans would come to nothing, that they would look foolish and stupid in the eyes of the world. Strike them with the spirit of stupidity. Strike them with the spirit of confusion in the name of Yeshua. On your palms they will carry you, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Upon the lion and the viper you will tread. You will trample upon the young lion and the serpent. God, allow them to trample upon. Allow them, God, to step upon. Allow them to tread upon the scorpions, the vipers, the lions in these nations that would seek to harm them. We ask, God, that you would arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. I am with him in distress. I will release him and I will honor him. Orech yamim ashbi'ehu. Orech yamim ashbi'ehu. With long life, I will satisfy him. Ar'ehu bishuati. And I will show him my salvation. God, show the world your power. Show the world your salvation. As we're in this month of Nisan, the month of miracles, as we're coming on the Passover, where you delivered Israel from their enemies, you parted the Red Sea with great signs and wonders. Even as the prophet says, even as the prophet says, Micah says, Micah 7, it says that in the end of days, I will show them great signs and wonders like in the days that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. God, show your justice, show your power, show your might, show your salvation, your salvation to deliver your people Israel, but your salvation to bring a transformation in the hearts of the enemies of Scripture. The enemies of Israel, the enemies of the Bible, the enemies of faith, God, turn their hearts towards you. And I pray, Abba, Tzor Yisrael, Kuma Be'ezrat Yisrael, Rock of Israel, arise to the help of Israel, Uftei Kinumecha Yehuda Yisrael and redeem Judah and Israel as you have spoken. Go aleinu Adonai tzivaot shemo. Go aleinu Adonai tzivaot shemo. The Lord of hosts, our Redeemer is his name. Kadosh Israel, the Holy One of Israel. Bohata Adonai ga'al Yisrael. Blessed are you, O Lord, who are the Redeemer of Israel. Open the hearts of Israel. May they cry out to you in their distress. May they understand, although they've been blessed with a great military, it is not by the means of the military that they will be delivered. Even as the Psalms declare, some might trust in horses, 
And some might trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. The horse in the chariot is a sham. The tanks in the planes won't save. Ultimately, Abba, it is you by your power, by your word, by your promise, by your belief, by your covenant that ultimately is going to deliver Israel. Bring her under the shelter of your wings. We pray, Avinu Shabashamayim, our Father in heaven. Tzur Yisrael Begoalenu, the Rock of Israel and our Redeemer. Barek Medinat Yisrael, bless the state of Israel. Reshit Smichat Gulatenu, the first fruits of our redemption. Hagain Aleha, and may you shield her. Be'evrat chazdecha by your love. Ufrosh aleha sukat shlomecha and spread over Israel the shelter of your shalom, the shelter of your peace. Ushlach orecha guide the leaders and the advisors of Israel in light of your truth. Help them with good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who defend our holy land. Give them the heart of David, the heart of an Ari. Give them koach. Give them strength. May there be no fear. Deliver them. Crown their efforts with triumph. Netzach, victory. Netzach, victory. We pray, God, Bless the land of Israel with shalom and its inhabitants with everlasting simcha, with joy. We say, Ana Adonai Hoshiana, Ana Adonai Hoshiana, Lord grant salvation. Ana Adonai Hatzlechana, Lord grant deliverance now. Ana Adonai Hoshiana, Lord grant salvation from their enemies, both physical and spiritual. Ana Adonai Hatzlechana, Lord grant success. Grant victory, grant triumph now in the name of Yeshua. We pray, we say Shalom Shalom Yerushalayim. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we believe God that you are with her and that you will bring the victory. We ask all this in the matchless name of our Messiah, Yeshua Meshachenu, whose name is above every name. We pray these things. Yes, may there be a ring of fire around Israel. May there be a wall of fire around her. May you, God, may the blood of Yeshua cover her, Lord. May you be her shield. May you be her shield in the name of Yeshua. So let's continue to pray. Let's continue to intercede. Let's continue to believe God. We know that he's got this. We don't live in fear. We live in faith. God delivered Israel at this time and season with a Yad Hazakah, with a mighty hand and a Zeroah Netiyah and an outstretched arm. And we believe God's mighty hand and outstretched arm is going to protect the nation of Israel. Thank you. I bless you for being part of the remnant. The remnant of Israel and the remnant of the nations that have not gone the way of the goats, turning their back on Israel, but have remained the true sheep who are faithful to the shepherd. You can't say you love Yeshua, Jesus, who is the shepherd of Israel, and hate the sheep. You can't, you can't hate, you can't love the God of Israel. The God, you can't love Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, who is Jewish, and hate the Jewish people. You can't say you are for Yeshua, you are for Jesus, and you are for his kingdom, and against the homeland where he was born and raised, lived and died, and is returning to. 
So thank you for being centurions. Thank you for being watchmen on the walls. Thank you for standing. And I just want to pray that you would have the wisdom and the courage and strength to on your social media, at work, at church, whether it's popular, unpopular, to make the truth known and to pray and to be ambassadors and to share the truth of what the Bible says concerning his promises to Israel and to the land. So I'll stay on here a minute. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to take any questions. That's awesome that you wear your Star of David in public. That's awesome. That's great. Yes, Lynn, Centurions. So if you have any question, I know, yeah, Tucker Carlson does have a huge audience. It's, it's, it's very, very unfortunate. We need to pray, and who knows what God can do. That's awesome, Romina. Tell the truth everywhere you go. I love it. We got to be bold. Listen, you know, there's this thought, there's this, in Jewish thought, it says that the generation before the coming of the Messiah has to be the generation that has great chutzpah, great boldness, great spiritual audacity. Because the more the world turns on God, on Yeshua, on biblical truth, on biblical values, on a scriptural worldview, it's going to be increasingly tough and costly to stand for him. And so we need to stay close to him now. What I say is, no, I would not say this is officially World War III uh, because the real question is, how is Israel going to respond to this attack? If Israel launches an all-out attack against Iran, and directly bombs all of its nuclear facilities. And if as a result of that, Russia and China come to their aid, and then America and Britain and the Western powers come to the aid, yeah, it could, it could become a world war. I don't think that's likely. I think it could become a serious regional war, and as I shared, this is, this is not just about Israel. This, there, there is a concerted effort by China, Russia, Iran, other nations to dethrone America and the West as the leaders in the world as the main economic driver in the world as the main military deterrent in the world and so this is really a test to see not just Israel's strength but what is a, what is the west what is america's resolve that's really this that's a big part of this and of course as we said it's the iranians trying to save face because their embassy was bombed by Israel and several of their military commanders were killed and so they had to do something or they would look weak. But here's the reality, right? When you have war and in the fog of war, one misstep can be the domino that sets something unintended that has much more serious and grave consequences into motion. Yes, it is a test for Israel's allies. So, you know, I mean, if we want to get end times, I would say that there's something in Ezekiel 38 known as the War of Gog and Magog. And the War of Gog and Magog, I believe, happens before the tribulation. I don't think this is that, but could this be the precursor to that? Possible. Possible. So I think we need to be watchful. Like Yeshua says, be watchful. We need to be mindful. And we need to pray. 
And he tells us to discern the signs of the times and is clear. Yes, prophecy is being fulfilled. It's clear there's an accelerated trajectory happening in the world today. And we need to be mindful of that reality. We're not at Gog and Magog yet because Gog and Magog is pretty much all of the world turning against Israel. You, we, can, we see the trajectory of that happening, but clearly we're not there yet. But listen, anything can happen. So let's be watching, let's be praying. Of course, we need to be praying for the hostages that are in Gaza to come home. Although from people that I speak to there, from reports I'm sure many of you have read, it would take, probably most of the men are not alive and a number of the women are pregnant. And they probably, they will probably never release them or at least not release them as long as they're pregnant. They'll want those babies. And they don't want the world to know the, the sexual crimes and the level of depravity. So I think it's, look, we got to hope against hope. We got to pray and believe for miracles. But obviously, Hamas has turned down the, the, the deal for a ceasefire for the exchange of hostages. They, say, they said they can barely locate 40 hostages. If they're saying that, who knows the real story, right? It's horrible, 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 horrible. Pray that God would comfort the families of those who still have loved ones that are unaccounted for, that are either being held hostage or they don't know the status of them. Pray strength for the Israeli military to do what needs to be done. Pray that they have the resolve to finish what they started so that, I mean, what I mean by that is that the worst thing that could happen is that they pull out and it becomes easy for Hamas to reestablish itself and we're back in the same situation. There's a question, is there an increase of Jewish people coming to Messiah? Uh, there are definitely more Jewish people coming to Messiah, I would say, but I also think that there is a greater openness among the Jewish people, and I think all of this is leading uh, to prepare the heart of Israel to be more open to Yeshua as the Messiah, and again, turn back to God, turn back to the Lord. So anyway, I really appreciate you all being on here. We'll con uh, let's continue to pray as if I hear anything significant, then of course I will jump back on. I love it. Am Yisrael Chai, the people of Israel live. And the next line says, Od Avinu Chai, because our Father in Heaven lives. That's the reality. You can't destroy the Jewish people because we have a Father in Heaven. We have a Messiah in Heaven who is King of the Jews, and He keeps His promises, and He promises no one will ever be able to destroy Israel, you can hurt us. You can take many of our lives, like in the Holocaust or on October 7th, but you can't destroy us because God's promises are true. His word is immutable and unchanging, and we know how the story ends. So, blessings on you guys. Thank you. Uh, for joining me. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I am not in, I'm not in Israel at the moment. I'm supposed to be leaving for Israel soon, but uh, that's not looking good at the moment. Uh, does this have to do with the red heifer? I would say that is another topic, but I would say no, this does not directly have to do with the red heifer. Um, some people think like, Hamas said one of the reasons why they launched their attack was because of the red heifer. Well, why? Because the red heifer being slain and its ashes being prepared is one of the things that has to happen in order to have a fully functioning temple. Uh, but there's lots of halakhic issues, Jewish law issues with that 
technically you can offer sacrifices on behalf of the community on the Temple Mount, according to some rabbis, and others say not at all. So there's a big debate about that, and there is no planned... Of course, there are those making plans for the future to do that, to, to reestablish the Temple and reinstitute sacrifices on the Temple Mount. But practically speaking, there is no plans right now, today, in the next number of months... Uh, to actually begin to do that. So just FYI. I think um, I think that it's a pretense. I think that it's the you bringing up the red heifer was a you know was kind of an excuse to justify what they did. It's just nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. So anyway, I bless you all. And I pray that he would give you his shalom. And even as we prayed his protection over Israel, I pray his protection over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. B'Shem Yeshua in Yeshua's name. Amen.